All right, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna go over the level two calculus exam from 2020. Uh, I've worked out each problem and I'm just gonna go through it step by step here uh, so you can see how to do these, okay? So we open the booklet and this is the first question that we get here, which is a straight finding the gradient of a graph where we're given an X coordinate. So of course, the first thing I'm going to do is derive this equation and pretty straightforward first question. I get um, 3x squared minus 4x. And what I'm going to do is substitute the value of 4 in there. And out should pop my gradient. So pretty, um, nothing, nothing too complicated for that first one, I would say. So the gradient at x equals 4 gives me 16 times 3 minus 16 gives me 32 for that one. All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, another function is given by this, this polynomial right here. Find the x-coordinate of the point on the graph. All right, so this one's a little bit different where we have to find the x-coordinate and not the gradient. So of course, my first step here is to derive it again. Uh, 0 0.5 times 2 is 1. So that's um, 1x. I don't really need that 1 there, but that's OK. Um, plus 3, and that's my derived equation. Now this says find the x-coordinate uh, where the gradient is 5. So when the gradient is 5, that means that this is equal to 5. So I'm going to leave that one off there. And that's a pretty easy problem for the second one on a calculus exam. So I'm going to get that x-coordinate is just 2. All right, let's go to the third one here. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve. Okay, so classic uh, finding the equation of a tangent 1. And I'm just going to underline this. And of course, we're going to use this um, equation of a straight line, which they don't give you on the formula sheet. So we're going to have to we're going to have to remember that one. And um, how am I going to do this one? I am just going to derive it, um, find the gradient at that point. So classic question here. Let's derive that. Of course, I get uh, 2x plus 5, and I'm going to find the gradient at x equals 2. So I'm going to find the gradient when x equals 2, which is 2 times 2 plus 5. Uh, and that gives me, and I get a gradient of 9 for this one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, OK, I know the gradient, and I know it passes through this point. So I'm going to use that y equals mx plus c formula. And I know that the gradient is 9. And I'm just going to substitute these values for x and y into my formula here to solve for c and then rewrite my equation. So I get 14 equals 9 times 2 plus c. So 14 equals 18 plus c. So if I subtract 18 from both sides, it looks like c is going to give me negative 4. All right, so then my equation, my final equation is y equals uh, gradient times x minus 4. All right, so uh, moving on, we get, we get a little bit more complicated with this next one. Okay, so check this one out. The, the gradient function of a curve is given by the equation here. P is a constant, okay. Curve passes through these two points. Find the equation of the curve. All right, so the, if, if, if that's the gradient function, then find the equation of the curve means we want to find f of x, which of course means we need to anti-differentiate that. Okay, so we, you know, we go through that step, we anti-differentiate this, and we don't know what p is yet, but that's okay, don't worry. So I'm gonna, that's going to be squared over 2 uh, minus 4x plus a constant. Okay, um, and I could, I could clean this up. Well, no, I'm not going to clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is how I did this one. So I've got two points to work with. All right, so I'm just going to substitute these two points in for x and y x is going to be 4 and y is going to be 12. And I'm going to simplify that and I'm going to see what I get. Okay, so with this point, what I'm saying is that 12 is going to substitute for f of x, because that's what it is, um, equals p. And I just plug and chug 4 in there and I just see what happens. Uh, minus 4 times 4 plus c. All right, so now I just, I just simplify this. I see what happens. I don't really know where it's going to end up. I get um, 8p here, because 4 squared is 16, and 16 divided by 2 is 8, minus 
16 plus C, okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is add 16 to both sides here. And I'm getting, when I add 16 to both sides, I get 28 equals 8P plus C. Okay. And so I wasn't sure, really sure what to do next, to be honest. So I just did the same thing with this point. I just substitute this, I substituted this coordinate in for here. All right. So I'll substitute 2 in for, I'll just kind of separate this, I guess. 2 in for f of x. So 2 equals p times negative 6 squared over 2 minus 4 times negative 6 um, plus that constant, which I don't know yet. Now I simplify, clean this up a bit. Uh, negative 6 squared is 36 divided by 2 um, gives me 18, so I get 18p. Negative times a negative is a positive, so that's plus 24 plus c. Um, now I think I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides, and I get negative 22, is that right? Yes, equals 18p plus c. All right, so if, if we don't know by now, we've got simultaneous equations going on here. All right, I've got two equations with two variables, so I should be able to solve for p and c. Um, so what I did, I don't know if this is the best way, but I just lined these equations up. I said um, negative 22 equals 18p plus c, and then I stuck this equation underneath it, and I said 28 equals 8p plus c. And I know that if I subtract this equation here from this equation, if I subtract this lower one from this top from this top one, um, the C is going to cancel out there. Now, when I did this, I was doing this in real time. Like I wasn't, I wasn't exactly sure if this would work, but I look at this and I think, yep, I think it would work. So I'm going to take away this entire equation like this. So negative 22 minus 28. And if we're not sure on that, use your calculator. Negative 22 minus 28 gives me negative 50. Uh, 18p take away 8p equals 10p. That's that, I can do that one. And c minus c that cancels out. So right here I solve for p. I get negative five. Negative five for p. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Find the equation of the curve. Well, I'm almost there. I just need to get what c is. Okay, and that's not too bad because I can substitute this in. I take that and I could substitute it into anywhere it doesn't really I'll, I'll plug it into there okay so if I say well if um, maybe that wasn't the best one to plug it in but it doesn't matter I think I can do it negative uh, 22 equals 18 times negative 5 I just solved that plus C and I'm gonna I'm going to solve for C uh, with that 18 times negative 5 is it 18 or 8 oh 18 yeah and I get negative 90 plus C, and then finally add 90 to both sides, plus 90, plus 90, and I get my value of C right there, and I get a positive 68. All right, so I can substitute those, those two values into this original one right here. Uh, I get my original equation must be f of x equals negative 5, I'll make it, I'll, I'll make it into a coefficient, negative 5 halves x squared minus 4x plus that constant of integration. And that is my answer. That is a doable problem. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that one. All right, so here's what we've done so far. And I'm um, just about to get to that very last question, which is, I think, a kinematics problem. And then that's question one for this exam. All right, so check out this next one, and I'm just going to highlight some of the some of the bits here. Uh, fishing boat is 80 kilometers from port when it reaches its fishing grounds. Uh, having reached its fishing grounds, it gives the acceleration straight line directly away from the port as it catches fish. Uh, okay, here's the acceleration. Okay, at half a kilometer per hour squared. So we we'll go. Okay, that's let's just start with what we know as a function of time. The acceleration is is 0 0.5. Okay, so I did read this question a couple times before I started it, and I checked it, so I'm pretty sure it's right. Um, the speed of the boat is, here's the velocity, when it starts fishing. All right, so what that means is that um, I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about the velocity here. Now, the velocity is when I anti-differentiate 
the acceleration. Okay, so this is going to be 0.5 t. Now, when it starts fishing, when t equals 0, that, that's what they're talking about there. When t equals 0, the velocity is 3. Okay, so when t equals 0, the velocity is 3, means I have that plus 3 at the end. Okay, um, now what's next? Um, during which hour? This is an interesting problem because I've never seen one that words it like this. Um, during which hour did the boat travel this many kilometers? Okay, so that means that's a displacement problem. Okay, and it's given me the acceleration and the volume and it wants to know about the distance. Okay, so that means I anti-differentiate this, the velocity, of course. I want to differenti differentiate, anti-differentiate the velocity. I add one to the exponent, divide by that new exponent, uh, plus 3t. Now here's where that plus 80 kicks in. All right, so the, the problem starts once they're 80 kilometers away from the port. All right, so when time equals zero, they're 80, they're 80 kilometers away from that port. So these are the two, three biggest equations you get from this, you know, pretty beefy word problem here. Okay, so what do I do next? Next, I just, I just cleaned this up a little bit, 0 0.5 divided by 2. I, can, I don't need that as a fraction, really. And I just wrote 0 0.25t squared plus 3t plus 80. All right, so here's where it starts getting pretty big, because what it means is dur during which hour means between which two hours, like between hours 5 and 6. So really, there's, there's an hour time span that's gone by where I've traveled 11.75k, and that's what I need to figure out. So what I did, and, and this is, I got a little help from, I talked to another teacher about this one, um, as I said, well, one, you know, between one more hour, that's going to be t plus 1. And I'm just going to substitute this t plus 1 everywhere in here. In, in there, t plus 1 squared plus 3t plus 1 plus 80. So between these two, okay, I'm going to clean this up. But between these two, when I take this and subtract this, I should get the distance of 11.75. Okay, so first of all, so here, here's, here's what I'm saying, I guess. I'm saying... Um, this minus this should give me 11.75. Okay, if that, if that makes sense. So first up, I'm just going to clean this up a bit. Okay, just, just kind of this part of the equation. Okay, just that part of the equation I'm going to clean up. And I get... Uh, 0 0.25. I'm going to expand those brackets in there, and I'm going to do it in one um, kind of one step. If you don't mind, I'm going to say it's t squared plus 2t plus 1 plus, and I'll expand that through because I can do that, 3t plus 3, and then that plus 8 at the end. Now I'm going to distribute, I'm going to expand that through. And I get 0.25t squared uh, plus 0.5, wait, is that right? Yeah, uh, quarter plus two, a yeah, quarter times two, yeah. 0.5t plus 0.25, and then the rest of this plus 3t plus, and I'll just combine these right now and get 83. Now I'm just going to, let's see, do I have any other like terms? Yep, I can clean this up and clean this up. So 0.25t squared um, plus, what's that, 3.5t, 3.5t plus 83.25.25. Okay. All right, now I just highlighted this, uh, this, this step because this is, the, this is the doozy right here. So what I'm saying is that um, this expression minus this expression will give me 11.75. So we're going to have to write that. Okay, so here's st plus 1. So 0.25t squared plus 3.5t plus 83.25 minus, I'm going to have to put this in brackets, Minus this big thing, 0.25t squared plus 3t plus 80. I'm running out of space almost. 
is going to give me 11.75. Okay, so let's let's clean this up here. Let's let's collect all these like terms. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, so what do I get? Um, these cancel out. Boom, boom. Uh, 3.5t minus 3t gives me 0.5t. Okay, and 83.25 minus 80 uh, gives me plus 3.25 equals 11.75. And here it's a straight linear equation. I subtract 3.25 from both sides and I get 0.5t um, equals 8.5. Okay, divide both sides by 0 0.5. Divide both sides by 0 0.5, and I get an answer of 17 hours. Okay, and yep, that's a long time to be on that fishing boat. And so, if you have time, so that's our answer. So, what I was saying is, if, if you have time to check this one, 17 hours means between this, like from 17 hours to 18 hours, is when it's going to travel this much. And to check this, You've got your displacement formula right here. You know, to check this, you'd go, well, um, you know, the difference between the 18th hour and the 17th hour, which I did check, um, you know, if I substitute that into the formula, 18, and substitute 17 into that formula, I will get 11.75. Okay, so that's, that's it for question one. I'll come out with a video on question two uh, later on. Okay, thanks for watching.